Hello YouTube and few master friend, 3D and redraw enthusiast. We are very happy that you are here. Please keep your stereo viewer and the few master 3D reel set ready, which we show here in our video. Even if you don't have this 3D picture set yet, maybe you can just listen to our spoken text and imagine the motives in your own fantasy world. Now listen to the following audio video while you take your time looking at the 3D images and switching accordingly frame by frame. This is the 3D Viewmaster cartoon favorites, Bazooka Joe and his gang. Viewmaster Reel 1 Picture 1 The circus comes to town. At least it does in Prairie City, USA at the best possible time of year. Everyone gets the blast in August. Family vacation trips are over. Memorial Day and the 4th of July are past. It's just a matter of sitting around and waiting for school to start. And if you're a kid, that can be pretty dull. This sitting around and waiting for school to start is really pretty dull. Bazooka Cho said to his pal, Herman. You said it, Herman nodded. But wait a minute, what's that on the telephone pole? A circus poster. Dingling Brothers, Three Ring Circus is coming to town. And it starts August the 8th. That's today, Cho yelled. Come on, Herman, what are we waiting for? I'll race you to the fairgrounds. Picture 2. Look at that fat lady, Herman said, pointing to the star attraction of the circus sideshow. Betcha she weighs more than 400 pounds, Joe said. Let's go see the bearded lady and the strong man. The thin man too, Herman added. Maybe he could tell me how to lose some weight. Well, if he does, we really ought to tell her about it, said Joe, looking back at the fat lady. Picture 3. Fido, the singing dog, though he sang, take me out to the ball game on key, and that is something not where every dog can do, shared top billing in the menagerie with a seal. The seal, of course, could only play the first three bars of my country, Ties of thee on a trumpet. Joe and Herman also saw lions and tigers and bears and camels and giraffes and elephants, each of them trained to parade around the circus ring holding onto the tail of the elephant directly in front of them. Picture 4. Circus life. From what they'd seen of it looked very attractive to the young to the two youngsters. The animals were fascinating. The circus people were interesting and different. And anything different was automatically good, especially for two boys who were just sitting around and waiting for school to start. Not too surprisingly, Joe and Herman decided then and there that they join the circus. Let's go get jobs. Joe told his friend. I'm with you, Herman said. But what kind of job can we do? I don't know much about circuses. Well, I don't either, said Joe. But it won't hurt to ask. Look at it this way. They might say yes. Picture 5. That settled. Joe and Herman looked around the circus grounds until they found Mr. Dingling's office. He seemed a very kind man and he smiled as they told him they were inexperienced but willing to learn. He had been young himself once, you see, and remembered that many, many years ago he, too, had come to the circus looking for a job. You're both hired, Dingling shouted. All I ask is that you both do your best. Wow, that's great, Joe said excitedly. If you were in Joe's place, 
you'd be excited too. We'll try hard. Picture six. Herman's job proved to be somewhat less exciting than he had imagined. Washing a herd of elephant is, let's be honest, about as glamorous as washing a fleet of military trucks. Of course, he had other things to do, feeding and cleaning up after them. But those are not what you'd call fun. Ever feed an elephant? Try it sometime. A full-grown elephant eats a half ton a day. That's a lot of hay. It wasn't all work and no play, however. Now and then Herman managed to sneak a ride on the elephants. And when he did, he imagined he was a wealthy Indian Maharaja on a royal tiger hunt, beating his way through a thick and tangled bamboo forest. The circus elephants also liked fun and games. One of them, a huge African bull, got a large charge out of spraying poor Herman with a shower of cold water. I'll get even with you, Herman muttered. Just wait till I find a mouse. Picture seven. The way things turned out, Joe wound up with a better job than his pal. The circus people were soon calling him Joe the ticket seller. He had a pretty good line. Step right up, ladies and gents. The big show is about to begin. See the seven wonders of the world. Trained animal acts, daring young men on the flying trapeze. Clowns and beautiful girls. Step up, folks. You can see them all. Just three dollars and fifty cents for adults. A buck and a half for kids. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The big top was nearly full. Mr. Dingling counted the house and realized it was going to be SRO, standing room only. Basuga Cho was really good at his job. View Master Reel 2, Picture 1. The grand opening parade, a circus tradition, got off on time. But while everything appeared normal on the surface, there was dirty work afoot. At that very moment, unknown to Mr. Dingling or the big crowd gathered in the main tent, a sinister-looking masked man was sneaking into Fido's tent. What evil lurked in his warped, misguided mind? Was he up to no good? He, and he alone, knew the answers to those disturbing questions. And he meant to keep it that way. Picture 2 Later that night, as Joe and Herman were bedding down the animals in the menagerie, they discovered a singing dog had vanished, disappeared into thin air. Naturally, Chow ran right over to Mr. Dingling's private quarters with the bad news. He found the circus owner already in bed, his head still on, though he was half asleep. There was no easy way to tell him, so Joe just blurted it out. The singing dog's been kidnapped. What did you say? The old gentleman asked. Sir, Fido's been kidnapped. Or maybe I should say dognapped. Anyway, he's gone. We can find him anywhere. Picture 3. Herman, searching for the dog as Joe went to the owner's tent, looked in every out-of-the-way place for some clue, a paw print, a hair, anything that might lead them to the missing dog. He had, as a matter of fact, decided that there was no point in going on with the hunt when he came to the performer's tent. I'll just take a quick look in here, Herman said, talking to himself. Then I'll quit. Good thing he didn't quit. A quick bed check revealed more mischief. The tightrope walker was missing too. 
poor Herman ran out of there as fast as his fat little legs could carry him. It was scary. Two kidnappings in one night, picture four. When he learned about the second disappearance, Dingling clasped his head with both his hands, mourning. I'm ruined! Friendly boys, the singing dog and the tightrope walker were my bread and butter. They were the real stars of this outfit. Now, well, without them, I may have to fold up the canvas and go out of business. The boys, however, urged him to hang in there. That is an old show this tradition. Don't worry, sir, the boys reassured him. We'll find them both. Somehow, somehow, just give us a day or two. I'm grateful for your help. If we don't find them soon, I don't see how I'll pay my bills, the old man cried. Picture 5 Joe and Herman, meeting with the other members of the gang early the following day, explained what had happened the night before told them about the two mysterious kidnappings and Mr. Dingling's financial problems. Everyone there agreed. We gotta do something. But what? For starters, they could do as Herman suggested. Search the whole town. Or, in an effort to raise some money for Mr. Dingling, they could have a cake and cookie sale, as Sally suggested sweetly. That brought a smile to Herman's face. He was always interested in food. Take a look at the sketch on the left and you will see Herman trying to read Joe's innermost thoughts. A light bulb, of course, has always been used in the funnies to indicate a bright idea. Joe wasn't thinking about light bulbs. He just had a truly brilliant idea. The show must go on, he shouted. We're the stars, picture six. I gotcha, Herman said. We can all pitch in and see this thing through, right? Right. Pietro, here can wash the elephants for me. Sally's the new ticket seller, and I'll sing like the dog. Listen to this. Take me a wood to the ball game. Sounds just like Fido, doesn't it? All you lack is fleas, Sally chuckled. Keep it up, and you'll need a dog license, Joe laughed. Picture 7 That takes care of the sideshow, said Herman. What about a tightrope walker? That's kinda tricky. I'll walk the tightrope, Joe said proudly. Gee, Joe, I figured you'd be looking for the dog. That, in fact, was what Joe had intended to do. But at the last minute, he had decided that the Prairie City Police could handle that end of it alone. I'll be okay, Joe assured Herman. Everybody tells me it isn't so bad if you don't look down. The gang parted company then. Pietro headed for the menagerie. Sally for the ticket office. Herman for the sideshow tent and Joe made a mad dash for the big top, where another large crowd had already started to assemble. Inside the tent, Joe walked toward the center ring and then slowly, very slowly, began to climb the rope ladder. View Master Reel 3 Picture 1 Up on the slender tightrope, Etching his way nervously toward the other end, which had that moment seemed several blocks away, Joe balanced himself as best he could. What was that he had told Mr. Dingling? Inexperienced but willing to learn? Well, this was really learning the hard way. On the job training, you might call it. Basuga Joe walks the tightrope. The Prairie City Daily News would carry that bold headline the next morning. But right now, seemingly suspended in mid-air, Joe kept telling himself, 
This is what I get for opening my big mouth picture too. It was shaky going right from the start. And a huge crowd didn't help. They had, after all, come expecting to see the great Zambini. Clearly, Shaw was a rank amateur, a poor substitute for the real thing. The audience, rightly or wrongly, felt they'd been cheated. Shaw, wobbling badly as he neared the middle of the rope, suddenly realized he wasn't going to make it to the other end. Meanwhile, the fans assembled at the sideshow were also disappointed. Herman was no singing dog. He wasn't even a dog-faced boy. True, he had memorized every word to take me to the ball game and he sang on key. But how many people do you know who'd pay good money to see and hear a 10-year-old kid give a lousy imitation of a singing dog. Not many. Poor Herman wished that he could die. Happily, Bobo, the trumpet-playing trained seal, was in good form that night. He played My Country, Ties of Thee, all the way through, without making a single mistake, and then... As an encore, he triple-tongued his way through the vastly more difficult Overture to Aida, Picture 3. Any viewer in the big top might have guessed the outcome of Joe's first solo attempt on the tightrope. He was begging for trouble, and sure enough, he fell, Picture 4. Falling 30 feet is no fun. That is roughly equivalent to taking a header off a three-story office building. And Cho, looking down toward the sawdust-covered sender ring, remembered too late that he was working without a safety net. There was nothing to break his fall. Down, down he tumbled, picking up speed, wishing he had taken out insurance with the good hands people. Cho closed his good eye and waited for what seemed like an eternity for the crash. Then, plop, he landed on the kidnapper, pinning the masked man flat against the ground and, at the same time, releasing Fido from the black satchel in which he had been held prisoner. Picture 5. Joe recognized the villain immediately. Are you ready for this? It was the tightrope walker, the great Zambini. No wonder we couldn't find you, Joe, to Joe told him. The great Zambini, however, didn't hear a word. He was out cold. The police later got a full confession out of him. Zambini had, it seemed, grown tired of being just a performer, and he figured that he could hold Fido for a handsome ransom, maybe a quarter of a million dollars. And with a fortune like that, he could have bought his own circus or flown to Mexico if he had wanted to. Picture 6. The lesson in all this is that cheaters always lose, straight shooters always win. As Tom Mix used to say, the tightrope walker had also learned that justice triumphs. Handcuffed and in chains, the great Zambini was marched off to jail. There, while looking through a bunch of mug shots, the police learned that his real name was John Q. Smith. He was wanted in several U.S. cities and in part of Canada. There was a big reward for his capture. Herman and the rest of the gang, having seen it done on TV many times, following last minute, game-winning touchdowns raised Joe High in the air. He was a Chinian All-American hero. A little bit later, Joe was told to report to the circus owner's office. The boss says he wants to see you, the messenger said, as soon as you can get there. Sorry, I can't tell you what's up, 
but I think you like it. Picture seven. Cho, my boy, good to see you, Mr. Dingling said. I have been authorized by the police to give you this check for $1,000 for your part in capturing the great Zambini. I also want you to know that I personally appreciate everything you've done for me. As a token of that appreciation and in partial may payment for your heroic behavior, I'd like you to have one of Fido's puppies. She's pregnant. If you want, you can have the pick of the litter. Herman, the old man said, turning now to Joe's chubby friend. I understand you like to eat. Well, eat anything you want, son. It's all on the house. There was more. Joe and his gang got lifetime passes to the circus. And that was nice because things got awfully dull in Prairie City, particularly in August. We want to add new videos every day. And if you don't want to miss any of them, subscribe to our channel for free. And press the little bell. We are also happy to have a thumb up.